In Kenya's Savo National Park, spring rains have finally come. The grass turned green almost overnight. And just as quickly, there are elephants, more than a hundred this day, drawn by instinct and memory across the landscape. Yes, they look red, for red is the color of the earth in this part of Africa. But the sight of healthy herds can be deceiving. The elephant's existence is at minimum threatened, and many fear the elephant is nearing a tipping point, the moment in the life of a species when numbers can't sustain survival. The David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust runs an elephant orphanage in Nairobi. Here, there are dozens of young elephants whose mothers have been killed. The children, collateral damage. We're here today and we see some of the wounds, the, the gunshot wounds, the, the snare wounds, but uh, human inflicted wounds uh, and these young, innocent baby elephants are, are the victims of that. So, I mean, it definitely drives the importance of it home. Faye Cuevas is an extraordinary woman, an American working for the International Fund for Animal Welfare, IFAW. Once they're released into the wild, there are many more threats and there are many more variables, but uh, at the end of the day, it's, uh, the elephant has to survive. Tens of thousands of elephants are killed by poachers every year, only for their tusks. It's the ivory they are after. The poachers are usually locals who know the territory hired by other Africans connected to a crime syndicate that reaches all the way back to Asia. These are some bushwise rangers here. Faye Cuevas brings a unique skill set to Kenya. She is a lawyer and a lieutenant colonel in the United States Air Force Reserve, an intelligence officer whose stock and trade is fighting terrorism and finding bad guys. Together, we walk patrol with a unit of the Kenyan Wildlife Service stationed deep in the bush. Their commander had been killed by poachers just weeks before. What do you think of the patrol? Very impressed with the patrol. This is a remote outpost for sure. Uh, these guys are living in, in uh, tent conditions, but we have a fine senior NCO that's uh, leading the element today, uh, which is fantastic. Everybody's uh, shiny boots, clean weapons, full clips, ready to go. How do you make the leap from, I'm doing this intelligence work to I'm going to move to Kenya <laughs> and work to fight elephant poaching. Well, it was two years ago today, uh, almost nearly to the day, that I saw my first elephant in the wild. And it is not an exaggeration to say it changed my life. I've watched you watch elephants. Mm -hmm. What do you see when you see these animals? Well, you know, so elephants are, are a matriarchal society. As the matriarch for the family, she has uh, many responsibilities. Some, I think, we as humans would consider to be traditionally female. She is a mother, but she's also a teacher in that it, it's her job to teach all of the elephants in the herd skills. She teaches them character. There's a pride and, and a confidence balanced against a compassion and empathy among elephant herds that's just astounding. What does it mean to you to know that this animal is under assault? Well, it means so much to me that I have relocated my family to Nairobi, Kenya, in hopes that we can be part of a much broader effort to save them. Because, Harry, to, to lose the elephants, which are on a path to extinction, you know, we have nothing but human apathy and greed to blame for it. And that, to me, is, is an inescapable truth. Faye is convinced military tactics and technology will make a big difference here. At every stop, she was like a sponge soaking up local intel. The quicker that we can collect it and depict those dots on a map, we know when and where it happened and who to attribute the, uh, the crime or the activity to. Details and data to build into elephant saving strategies. It is safe to say Colonel Cuevas is on a mission. And while her military background is highly valued, equally valued are her diplomatic skills. As an honored guest at a Maasai village near the Maasai Mara National Park, Faye was all in. Important because the Maasai control hundreds of thousands of acres of open land, making the Maasai a key ally in the fight against poaching. Faye envisions a day when a Maasai herdsman will be able to give wildlife officials a heads up if poachers creep into their territory. 
To secure that cooperation, we followed Faye on a five-hour journey. We took the road less traveled. In truth, little more than a dirt trail that with an overnight rain turned into a sticky trap for our vehicles. Getting stuck in the mud was not going to stop Faye. Our destination, the Maasai Sacred Forest, home to the Liban, the tribe's high holy man. Thank you, sir, and we appreciate your leadership on this, on this issue. He's on board, too. That was intense for him to uh, endorse uh, a, a commitment to stopping poaching. We, we, it was the ultimate success. As one of the oldest surviving cultures on the planet, there is little they don't notice. That warrior knows that area better than anybody. He knows, you know, every bend in the, in the river. He knows where vegetation is. He knows by looking at a rain cloud, which direction the rain will move and, and how long it will last. Faye Cuevas is not alone in her fight to save the elephants. In our two-week travels across Kenya, we were often awed, and we found other women, local women, who are making a dramatic difference. In Kenya's North Country, we met a kind of community organizer slash miracle worker named Josephine Akiru. She works among the nomadic tribes that herd cattle and goats here, an area infamous as a hotbed for smuggling, poaching, and tribal warfare. My people, my tribe. Her job, because to persuade locals that it's in their long-term interest to protect wildlife, audacious in that it's a woman delivering the message, courageous because it's a good way to get killed. I decided to sit down and uh, came with an idea of facing these guys directly. Excuse me. Because. Excuse me. You have this idea to come face the poachers face to face? Yeah. Weren't you afraid? I wasn't afraid because I know that if you are fighting for the right thing, you should not be afraid. She's convinced local tribesmen to stop fighting and stop poaching, to trade their life of crime for jobs as rangers. These two former poachers were mortal enemies, one from a Christian tribe, the other from a Muslim tribe. And now... This is your brother? This is my brother. <laughs> In the safety of the Lewa Reserve, several hours to the south, we met with Manira Bashir, the Kenya director of the Nature Conservancy. She remembers a Kenya where elephants were everywhere. And she says, it can be like that again. I think if you own something, then you'll take care of it. Mm. Yeah. It really is bottom up instead of top down. Yeah, bottom yeah. up is the, the way to go. The idea that these rural folks mm -hmm are in charge of their own lives and are in charge of their own space. Mm -hmm. How important is that? It makes me very proud and it makes me believe that the wildlife that is here today, 10 years, 20 years, it's going to be there because it's in the hands of the rural people. Kenya is making clear poachers are not welcome in their country. Convicted poachers receive a mandatory 20-year prison sentence and last year this, a clear and emphatic message to the world. The Kenyan government set fire to a 100-ton pyre of ivory. Elephant tusks confiscated off the black market. Street value, a staggering $100 million. We identify with the elephants, you see, because... Judy Wakungu is Kenya's Secretary of the Environment. And this is the ashes. This is, these are the ashes. So this is to commemorate that Ivory has no value unless it is on a live elephant. We wish we could wrap up here with an all is well in Africa moment. Stretch, bitch. But the number of young elephants in the orphanage in Nairobi continues to grow, which shows the fight against poachers is far from over. The hope here is community-based conservation, like the efforts we witnessed, will be the strategy that ultimately slows and stops the slaughter efforts that seem particularly effective when women are involved. Is it my imagination or are women really having a dramatic effect on what's going on here? It's not your imagination. I think that there's a femaleness that's necessary because we're willing to listen. 
you know, we as women, we feel deeply. And I think it's from that feeling that passion grows. And where passion grows, solutions follow. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.